I'll make some comments, Graham. Look, uh, uh, Bernard, I'll call you while I'm talking to you. Um, look, I, with organisations, when we're talking about this stuff, the behaviour I see from line managers is appalling, right? Especially where it's a blokey culture and blokes don't want to go here. Um, for me, this issue is about duty of care. And if there's any HR practitioners in the room or line managers in the room, I'd really encourage you to go back and really think about what, what duty of care means within your organisation. Um, and we need to be speaking to organisations in organisational terms, not in social science terms, about what their obligations are under occupational health and safety legislation. Pretty much Commonwealth and each state talks about that employers have the ob obligation to create a physical and emotionally safe workplace, or words to that effect. You know? And somewhere along the line, I reckon over the last five or six years, we've walked away from this duty of care concept. You know? and, and one of the things I try and get my clients to start talking about is what is your duty of care from the employer to the employee, but equally from the employee to the employer, but similarly, to what's, your, what's duty of care between employees to each other? I think there was a court case only a couple of years ago, Bernard, where um, one of the unions was fined uh, for putting excess stress on one of their union delegates to, 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 to achieve numbers, and that person went out and self-harmed, and the employer was, was found negligent. Right? So what this is to me is about a case of duty of care, and, and I don't know if we speak enough about that, use that term enough in organisations nowadays. The other thing I'd like to say is, as a way of getting awareness of, within organisations and, and breaking the ice, you've got, to look, you've got to use the numbers to our effect. Now, there's five men a day and two women a day commit suicide. Mental Health Council of Australia came out in a, Bernard, in a, in a press release in the middle of last year that said they think there's up to 200 Australians a day attempting suicide. I don't know if you remember that, um, but I got it from you, so, so it must be right. This stuff is no longer, in organisations, this stuff is no longer six degrees separation. It's one degree of separation, you know. And I use that, I think, the message gets through to organisations, to people in organisations, when this stuff is no longer out there, it's, it's, it's in here, you know. And when I'm working with groups, I ask them a question. How many people in this room know someone who has attempted suicide? Can I ask the people in this room, how many people in this room know someone who has attempted suicide? All right. Hey. I get people in the group, the group say, look, stop and look around because that's not, a, that's not an atypical response, you know. And, and when people look around the room and they say, gee, we, we, we actually experience this through our families, through our kids, through our communities and all that type of stuff, it becomes a topic that people are more prepared to talk about. But you've got to make it real. And so if I can just make those two observations, Bernard, one about duty of care, but, but, but everyone, look, everyone in this room I know has got a story but every line manager's also got a story, you know? So, you, so get the stories out, you know, and get people used to talking about stories. And, and it, you know, the old, who remember the old, who was the bloke who came up with the iceberg strategy? You got uh, organisational change. Was it Chris Agris? It was about reducing the level around, around the iceberg, you know? So we start talking about organisational values, organisational beliefs, organisational stories. Um, get, those, get those stories out. And, and if I can say one other thing, it's about training line managers to have dialogue with people. Over the years, line managers, I reckon, have got gun shy because of union issues, because of discrimination issues, privacy issues, and all that type of stuff, about sitting down and saying to someone, mate, how are you getting on? Right? And, and, and actually wanting to ask the question. But I don't reckon we train line managers, even supervisors, in basic dialogue skills. We train them in communication, but not dialogue. Um, and, 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 it's, and it's those fundamental skills that are so crucial to, 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 to this type of dialogue, I think, you know. And I always say to people, hey, look, when you're going to have a dialogue, first thing you've got to assume is denial. First thing, if, you, if I said to Jill, how are you getting on, Jill? Nine times out of ten, guess, guess, guess what she's going to say? I'm okay, right? So then you say, right, oh, well, my duty of care is, okay, you're okay, but in three months' time or three weeks' time, I'm going to be having this conversation. Again, and, it, and if this performance doesn't happen, and this is where I think we can use performance management issues or processes, we, start to, we can start to rev the heat up in terms of the discussion. Right? But it's about training line managers around... I mean, how many of your, your line managers would understand their own duty of care? Who rams at home to, to line managers in their induction, in their, in, their, in their selection, in their training? Who talks about duty of care? I mean, that, that's fantastic. That needs to be part of our induction. 
right? part of our bloody, did I just swear publicly or privately? Part of, our, um, part of our conversation we have with people about their level of awareness, then it's about giving the skills about um, dialogue and about how you talk to the people about this stuff and the fact that it's all right to talk to people about this stuff, you know?